it's one of the starting or stepping stone toward legalizing homosexuality. And how I wish we just shelved it, because one, it breaches many articles of the Constitution, and any law that breaches acts of the Constitution must be declared null and void or unconstitutional. And when that happens, I'm sure the courts will pronounce themselves that even homosexuals have rights. Because they've already put that in our constitution. Article 21, Article 27, Article 28, Article 29, all of that. They've even, uh, Uganda also has what we call the Equal Opportunities Commission, which was provided for to ensure that no one is discriminated. And it's funded by government. If we have homosexuals today, funded by government for treatment, not only that, Government procures for them are no lubricants. Do you think we have seriousness in fighting homosexuality? You go to Murago, see MAPI clinic, and all these MAPI clinics all over the country in national referrals, they are there. Government is buying lubricants and giving them to homosexuals free. In 2013, 2017, 3 billion shillings was spent on that. 2018 to 19, 28.5 billion shillings was spent on lubricants for homosexuals. So, to me, we are just joking. We are not serious about fighting homosexuality because government is always doing the wrong thing when it comes to fighting homosexuality. To the president now, <clears throat> what do you have to tell him? I think the president must not listen to these populist, hypocritical and opportunistic members of parliament who simply pass laws because they want to be seen by their, uh, by their electorate, because they want votes. This uh, populism, populism, hypocrisy and opportunism is killing this country. The president should be strong. We don't need that law. We have better laws on the penal code, which have never generated controversy. Section 129 of the penal code, if you sodomize or have sex with a minor, the maximum sentence is death. If you defile, that is a simple defilement, the uh, maximum sentence is life in jail. If you attempt to defile under pedophilia, then uh, the maximum sentence is life in jail. If you attempt under simple defilement, maximum sentence is 18 years. Actually, not even maximum, it is 18 years. It's not even maximum. And when you promote under section 149 of the penal code, the maximum sentence, actually, it is seven years. You, you must be imprisoned for seven years. Now, look at the Anti-Pornography Act, which was recently passed. If pornographers have been all over the internet, yet that law exists, do you think this one is going to make any difference? Why should we pass a controversial law which spurs up hatred and so on and so forth? of our country yet we've been having these laws and these criminals have been arrested teacher makande was sentenced to 12 years for sodomizing a boy uh, ronald isabiri 20 years on each of the six counts for sodomizing six boys he's in luzira um, um, uh, justice masaru musene sentenced him then we have uh, paul nabamba he was sentenced to 30 years by dpp jane francis apodo for sodomizing a five-year-old boy and giving him his spams to drink in a cup. So all of these cases are there. Even there is a Sheikh, Sheikh Yisabi, he's in Luzira for sodomizing six boys. There are so many cases. But the way the MPs presented it was as though we don't have any law under which we deal with homosexuality. Yet we have very good laws which have generated no controversy. And to me, this populist law, I opposed it because it is going to add nothing and nothing and nothing to fighting homosexuality. I've always argued, if parliament is serious about homosexuality, let it hold the police accountable. Why does police kill cases? Why does police uh, eat evidence? Why does police arrest victims and accuse them of giving police false information? I have many cases to that effect. Now, why does do these RSAs, why do they kill cases when there is evidence? Then the, 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 the judiciary, the courts, why do courts simply 
uh, not deliver justice. If courts cannot deliver justice, then where will the justice become a forum? So, I've argued that let us hold the systems accountable. If parliament cannot hold the systems accountable, then it's a totally useful, it's a totally useless, useless and useless junk, which we don't need. And if I had powers, I would have simply sent all parliamentarians away because they are adding nothing and nothing and nothing toward the betterment of this country. The only thing they do is to go sit for allowances, eat money, probably go abroad, enjoy in hotels, have sex and so on and so forth, full stop. But when it comes to the plight of the masses, our parliamentaries are adding totally nothing. Had they been adding something, they wouldn't be coming up with totally useless laws. 214 Act of uh, Anti-Pornography Act was passed. It is not working. During these two, three months, we've had uh, the worst pornography and gay porn saturated. How many have been arrested? How many have been saturated? How, how many have been arrested? How many have been prosecuted? With regard to the pornography, that has been moving all over. WhatsApp, Facebook, and so on and so forth. So I believe Parliament is totally useless junk. They come up with the laws which they know they won't work simply because they want popularity or they eat the money or they are serving the interests of those people. And I've come to question, when I look at the anti-homosexuality bill as it was passed, then I get to think, because it breaches many articles of the constitution, homosexuals jumped on board when framing it so that it can become so controversial and eventually result in one, courts pronouncing that even homosexuals have rights. Wait for the constitutional court because I know it will be taken there. And don't be surprised. In 2014, Justice Kavuma and his team did us a favor. They simply trashed the anti-homosexuality bill then or act. They trashed it on just technical grounds. They never delved into the contents but if this time they delve into the contents don't be shocked and don't be surprised when finally courts declare that homosexuals have rights to non-discrimination have rights to privacy have rights to association have rights to be registered as human beings and by the way the anti-homosexuality bill is the law that has now made it open that we have homosexuals in this country and once that is pronounced because they define homosexuals as people who engage in same sex activities and you cannot make a law which targets a people that means that the law which people think is going to fight homosexuality actually is going to make it more difficult to fight homosexuality because homos also have rights under the UN Charter and under the Constitution of Uganda Thank you so much. And there are precedents to that. One was made by Justice Terror Aracha Moko. It was a case where uh, victim Cassandra, her partner, uh, Yvonne, they were arrested for live sodomy acts and porn and promotion. When taken to Chirika, they said, okay, you arrested us, yes. We are doing it, yes. But who gave you permission to encroach on our right to privacy? The RSA dropped the matter, DPP dropped them, the matter. Then they sued the Attorney General and they were awarded 13 million shillings plus costs by Justice Terra Aracha Moko. She now sits in the Constitution, in the Supreme Court. Do you think she's going to backtrack from that stand that she took in 2008? Then there's Justice Chibuka Moko. That a thief is not a thief unless caught in the act. So a homosexual is not a criminal unless you catch him in the act. But then you cannot catch him in the act unless you get permission from court. And the permission from court must be that you encroach on the privacy. Now, if that is the way, and that judgment exists, do you think Justice uh, Chibuka Musuke is going to backtrack from that position? So we are simply daydreaming. And I, I even wonder how journalists have simply taken it for granted that that act, that, that law, the, the bill is actually pro-Uganda. 
a bill that muzzles the media. Media has been our greatest partner in the fight against homosexuality. Not police, not judiciary, not priests, not pastors. No, no, it is the media. And now the bill muzzles the media. You cannot report unless you get either victim permission or court permission. But then a court has authority to even tell the victim to keep silent. That means we are not going to access the information that we need. So the bill is very restrictive. Even then, the bill mandates that we are a counselor, a sheikh, a pastor, a doctor who report homosexuality when victims come to us or clients come to us. I'm not a reporter, I'm not an informer, I'm not an agent of the state. Why should I be mandated to report when a victim doesn't want to report? My role is to counsel, my role is to rehabilitate, and I'll continue doing that. When we took Kayanja's victims to police, police killed the cases and then turned on us. How sure are we that this time, when we help victims to report, police won't turn on us? Have the Grace Akulos left police? Have the Ochoms left police? By the way, Sodom is not a new issue in Uganda. It has been there. How do you know that the person, the police officer you report to, is not part of the Sodom rocket? Or the RSC is not part of the Sodom rocket? I don't want us to get involved in what we won't manage. That law is a totally unproductive law. And I'm sure it won't work. And it's going to cause Uganda very many problems. Forget about the, the Uhula Balu, the world talking. No, it is going to be the stepping stone toward legalizing homosexuality in this country, which will fought a lot to avoid.